not topical, episode five, right in here in the flush. You got your boy, Strange Wang. You got Nathaniel. Today, starting it off as usual, movie news, because it's a podcast, mostly about movies. Not all about movies, just mostly. So, starting off, what's the movie news? Uh, they DC made James Gunn the head of their shit for movies and stuff. And that's a smart fucking decision. Yeah, it's a really smart decision. Uh, that guy knows what he's doing. They ne- yeah. clearly need some sort of, like, preconceived direction and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it probably sucks for Marvel because I'm assuming that part of this deal is that he's not going to be able to do shit for them anymore. But it's a good move. I guess Guardians 3 is done with. I guess he filmed that already. Yeah, I mean, unless it's just done, or they're just gonna... No, they Guardians 3 slated, and they got a Christmas special in between that I'm not gonna watch. Unless but... they're just gonna slap some other somebody else. I mean, there have been plenty of movies in history that were completely directed by one person, and they changed directors at the very end, and added, like, one extra scene, and then the whole film says directed by this guy. So, yeah, there's no telling. Either way, it's a really smart move for DC. Maybe we'll actually get some, like, consistently good DC movies. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm also, I'm just worried about movies in general. Out of the two of us, I'm always the worry wart. That's true. People still say that. Worry wart? I don't know. You look like a wart. <laughs> you fucking... If I'm a worry wart, you are a crow's foot. I'm worried because you just brought back Superman because Black Adam is like boom audience wise it's the second highest DC movie mm-hmm. it's right on the Dark Knight which is fucking mind blowing to me but it's right there people are loving that you already got already got a couple films in the canon are they throwing him in a dumpster and saying hey clean us up uh I don't know if it's like a full blown dumpster I think they're like throwing him in a dumpster that just got dumped and there's a bunch of weird sticky residue on the side they're saying, like, hey, clean this off. Because his style doesn't scream Superman to me. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think he could do it easily. Like, I don't I don't know. I'm not a fan of putting people on boxes. I will never look at a director and say, you've only ever really done this thing, so you can only do this thing. I don't think that's fair. Uh, so I'm always willing to give someone a shot. Now, it might end up being that that's true, but everyone deserves a chance to try something different and see yeah. if it works. Which, I mean, we learned that Trigon's the big bad now that they're going for. Mm-hmm. James Gunn done horror movies in the past. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a nice transition for sure. He might not even be directing those big movies. He might just be doing the story. But it's in his bag for sure, I would say. Yeah. And also, you, right now, that to me, that's a clear separation from what he's doing and like what DC's allowing him to do. Yeah. Trusting him to say, Hey, let's have super squeaky clean John Cena say, fuck this, fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck, shoot, shoot, shoot. And it works. So bath look, if he gets a movie, you can expect some fucking blood, some fucking goonie villains. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm expecting a good time. Yeah. That's like the first piece of like superhero news in a long time that actually made me go all right yeah uh and also like what a comeback too because this dude was canceled like four years ago and like i know everyone's pretty much over that already and we kind of all realized that that was that was not the best canceling that we've done as a society right i don't remember Uh, what he did oh they were like dug up some tweets that he made like now they're like 15 year old tweets at the time they were like 10 year old tweets oh he get kevin hearted and it was shit that he had like already apologized for because back when he made those horror movies like he like he straight up had a like a moment f- like five years after he made all the horror movies and like made the stupid tweets where he was just like yeah i was like growing i was literally just making these really these gross out horror movies and saying this stuff on twitter just to be shocking and try to get attention and that was stupid and then someone dug it up 10 years later and was like, oh, look at this fucked up shit that this guy said. And then Disney was like, you're fired. And then he got unfired because fans were like, bro, what the heck? And then there was a Twitter war because there were the triggered people versus the not triggered people. 
ultimately, he clearly bounced back pretty hard because now he's basically the Kevin Feige of DC, and he's about to be making a boatload of money. That's facts. You know who also got unfired? Who? The uh, nursing student on house. Oh. She got fired, then unfired, then fired, then unfired. Yeah. I'm almost done. She's done with her residency. She's got a job with house, possibly. I finished off when she was making the decision. Mm -hmm. She was like, she did like some fuck shit where she was like, hey, you need the surgery. Paige said no. She said, fuck it. Did some, uh, some momo shit to do the right thing. And then she felt bad about it because she had to cut the girl's arm off who was trying to sell around the world with a young sailor. She felt really bad about it, but mm. she saved her life. So I don't know if she's back with house or not, but 13's back. I'm almost done with season seven. I got like three episodes in it. And then season eight. I almost stopped at season seven because I was like, I don't want to see house and uh Cuddy break up. Mm. So I was like, I don't think I'm done. But the scene where House has to go in and do the uh, the career day to get uh, Cuddy's kid in that school. Yeah. Favorite episode so far. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Because there's so many film references in it, too. Because he starts off, like, him and Foreman such in the house. And they're quoting Pulp Fiction. And then he takes out a gun and shoots a guy. <laughs> and then they do... uh. There's a whole bunch of movie references in Very good, but that was the house talk for this episode. What's the rest of the movie news? Uh, Well, you found this one. I don't really know anything about oh, it. Oh, Terrifier 2. Yeah. This shit is... I'm not a fan of horror movies, but this shit made me very happy. Because an independent movie, fan-funded, is blowing up. It's huge right now. Not Top Gun 2, which is, isn't super impressive, but... You know, like... It's, I think the impressive thing is Top Gun 2 is still in, like, top 10 movies of making money for the week or whatever. Knocked it out. No CGI. Practical effects. That's what really I'm excited about. A movie getting this much traction and hype. No CGI. All practical effects. For a low, 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 low budget horror movie. To me, I think that's that's pretty damn cool. Wait, are you going to watch this? No. I was about to say, because you, you walk looking, out of... If people are walking out of this puking, I'm not watching it. What was the the can raw. Of raw? Yeah, you you walked out of raw. That shit, I was pale as a ghost. I gotta know what's making people puke about it. Like, it's just violent, bloody, sadistic. Yeah, but in what like, we see that all the time though. Not like so, this. Apparently. Well, that's what I'm saying. It has to be like in a specific context. I'm probably not gonna watch it. I'll probably, like, go to Wikipedia and read the, like, detailed plot synopsis just so I can know what happened. But that is really interesting to me. I That's what I like about it. I hope more people will see this. And instead of putting their $8,000 into a shitty green screen, let's see if we can stretch those practical effects. Listen, to call back to what we talked about last time, horror is, like, yeah. almost single-handedly propping up movies right now. Yeah, it's unfortunate for some scared little bitches like us, but it's unfortunately true. Yeah. But hopefully we'll get more movies with no CGI. That's what that's my thing. I'm tired of fucking CGI. Black Adam, awful CGI, but it's a fun movie. I'm tired of CGI. Give me something else. Let me, let me see some all set shit. Let me see some actual explosions. I want more, like, good, like, crime drama movies. Yeah, do that. Like, I don't want... Don't remake Heat, but, like, give me more movies like Heat, The Town, Hell or High Water, No Country. The Stranger that just came out is kind of like that, which I think is why I like it so much. But, yeah. Just give me more shit like that. But, I think that's cool. Yeah. And it's also, like, the fan-funded thing. Yeah. Which is like shows people still care about movies. Obviously, horror has like a cult audience. But like, let's get some more cool shit. Like, I know like somehow like someone in a studio was like, let me make a good Predator movie. And they did. Yeah. But like, let's get some passionate people behind a, a new Terminator movie. Where they're like at war. Like Terminator 2 is happening here. But they're at war there. 
Like, let me get something like that. That is going to be a ton of CGI in the movie that you were talking about. I understand that. But, like, the fan fun, like, people loving shit to make movies and not doing it to make money. Let's just not, like, reboot any more franchises. Okay. Well, I love Terminator. Yeah, and you have plenty of Terminator to love. I have two movies to love. That's all you need. You got 12 Star Wars movies to love. I don't want to hear that. But well, it's a better franchise than Terminator, so it makes sense. Bro, there's not one Star Wars movie that's better than T2. Empire Strikes Back. And Rogue One, in my opinion. And the in numbers your don't lie. In so, your opinion. numbers don't lie. Bro, Terminator 2 has a, probably has a much higher right amount of score than both of those movies. I'm, I'm talking about money. I'm talking about what people want to see. Nobody sheep. wants to see that shit. Sheep? You're a fucking sheep. Are you kidding I me? I'm a sheep. You are. Absolutely. You're a sheep. What, no. what makes me a sheep? You fucking you're a you're an '80s sheep. Stallone's in it. I'm gonna watch it. You know if if you could get your hands on every Stallone movie, like even all his stupid straight to DVD shit, you'd probably be like, "This is good." Stallone's in it. Nah, bro. I just reviewed a uh, fucking a superhero movie, and I was like, "That shit garbage." What was that called? I don't even remember because it's not good. Yeah, because he sucks. He doesn't suck. He does. He's not good. Washed he's up. Past his prime. Washed up. He's, yes, he he's, is washed up. Yeah, I agree with that. You need to take roles that fit your age. Like you don't see the Nero running down the street shooting people anymore. It's true. I wish I wasn't about to see Harrison Ford in a fucking Indiana Jones costume, but guess what? Here we are. Yeah, oofa. But the next movie news is not about that. This is something I think is really cool. We got a fucking Dennis Rodman movie. 48 Hours in Vegas, that's the working title right now, and it's about his 48 Hours in Vegas where the Bulls are in the finals and have to go find Dennis Rodman because he has to play in the fucking NBA finals for a championship, and starring is Jonathan Majors coming off of MCU work, Creed 3, I think this is interesting because we've never seen a character that he's played like Dennis Rodman. And also, holy fucking shit. This has to be very uncut gems esque in tone and he, feel, I think. He was in One Night in Miami too, right? I don't think so. I can't remember. Oh well. But that's what I want. I want to see like a fucking uncut gem style of tone. And suspension. The first time I watched Uncut Gems, I had like an uneasy feeling in my stomach. I don't think you should go that far because it's like we know he makes it to the finals and whatnot. But it's just to see a movie where Jordan and Pippen are like going around fucking Vegas. While Dennis Rodman's fucking donkey fucking Carmen Electra doing whatever <laughs> the fuck Dennis Rodman's doing. Yeah. Like dyeing his hair or something like that. It's going to be an interesting, fun movie. I kind of wish A24 is making it because I think they would do the best job at it. Yeah. Like this vein of, a again, Uncut Gems or a Red Rocket. Like, you need the right director for this to work, I think. Sure. I'm just interested in, like, what the story is going to be. Because the real story is Dennis Rodman went to Phil Jackson and was like, hey, I'm in my fucking head. I need to disappear. And Phil Jackson was like, okay, go do what you need to do. Make it quick. And then two days later, he's still not back. And then Jordan walked into his hotel room. Hotel room. Carmen Electra was like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he was like, we got to go play. Where's he at? And then they got him and they brought him back. So, like, it's a charismatic story. It's a story that shows, like, how eccentric Rodman was. But, like, everything worked out. I'm sure in the moment, they were probably, like, a yeah. little stressed. Like, oh, my God, is he going to get back or not? But it's not like they weren't going to play the game without him if he didn't show up, you know? And, like, he's important to that team. So, I'm just wondering what the stakes are going to be. Yeah. You know? Like, because, like you said, we know how this all worked out already. This isn't, like, a retelling of, like, a terrorist attack or, like, some major yeah. thing that happened. It's a basketball player who needed to go party to get his head straight. He did. He came back. They won a very important basketball game. So, I'm definitely not saying it's not going to be good. I'm just interested to see, like, are they going to kind of invent some stuff for the story to, like, add that to it? Or are they just going to... Is it just going to be, like, 
such a well-made film that we feel it, even though we know it's going to happen? Or is it just not going to be good? Time and will also, tell. who the fuck's going to be in this goddamn movie? Yeah. Who's going to be Michael Jordan? Bro, have you ever seen that Who's thing? Who's going to be Carmen Electra? About Jimmy Butler being Jordan's uh, father, bastard son? <laughs> I don't think so. So Jimmy Butler looks a lot like Michael Jordan. Also, Jordan's kids don't really like Michael Jordan. They're not tall like Michael Jordan. Uh, Jimmy Butler's mother said the father didn't want to tarnish his name. So I can't tell you who your father is. Kicked him out at 13 years old. That's when he stopped paying child support or whatever. Hmm. Or stopped giving. She was like, fuck, I don't want this kid anymore. I hate him because I see him or whatever the fuck. Very important guy. So everyone's like, oh, it must be Michael Jordan. If they could get yeah. Jimmy Butler to play, like, <laughs> that conspiracy theory on film. Yeah. And he's like, Michael Jordan, I think that'd be fucking cool as shit. But again, how many six foot tall, six two, six three guys are good actors that's going to be in this movie? I, how, I think that's going to be the interesting part. How many other basketball players are even going to be in the movie? Oh, that's true. Like, you could just have some, like, really all you need to set it up is a conversation with Rodman and F- Phil Jackson in the beginning. If you want to have, you could have, like, a like a blurry shot of people shooting, you know, shooting around doing drills in the background, but you don't really yeah. need to show anybody. Like, so, but it's also, like, you know who else was on that team. Yeah. So, do you have the Dennis Rodman movie? During this time period, without someone being Michael Jordan in it, I mean, <laughs> you, you dress up Steve Kerr to be Phil Jackson. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd be funny. Yeah, but so I'm looking forward to this movie. So far, I haven't heard a lot about 2023, or if this is even caught 2023, it might be 2024. I don't know. A very anticipated movie for Strange Wing, but also I fucking love this because there's so many times I'm watching a documentary. And they tell this little offbeat story that has nothing to do with the overall arc of this person's life. But it's such an interesting story. Mm. It's like, bro, make a documentary about that. Yeah. Like, Mike Tyson, one of the most interesting people in the world to me. Because his story arc is so crazy. And, like, he's a very layered individual. And he's not the smartest guy. So how he explains stuff is almost childlike. And he breaks it down to, like, not make you feel stupid, but... It, it's very easy to understand how he feels. Mm-hmm. So, like, there's little teeny stories I've heard about Mike Tyson. And I'm like, that'd be such a good fucking movie. Like, he's so interesting. So, like, I hope we get more of that. There's none that I can think off the, like, top of my head. But, yeah. But, like, comedian. You, you've heard of Joey Diaz? I know who that is, yeah. Bro, that funniest motherfucker to me. Not a big fan of his stand-up, which is weird. But... Like, when he's on podcast telling stories, hmm. one of the most interesting people ever. Like, every time, like, he'd be having me in tears laughing so hard. Which I also find that weird. And this is off topic from what we have scheduled, but... You I would don't, say it's not topical. It is not topical. Yeah. Is it just me or comedians, their stand-up isn't as funny as stand-up used to be but these comedians on podcast are killing i don't know how many comedians that's like what i watch in my free time i don't watch anything about movies i want to have my own opinion about movies i'm either watching comedians podcast or i'm watching wrestling stuff like top five wrestling wcw guys whatever the fuck but like joe rogan podcast bobby lee theo von uh norm mcdonald uh the other mcdonald guy the young guy He's super fucking funny. Two bears. Like, on podcasts, they're funny. Like, I hate Burt Chrysler. Kreshner. He don't deserve for me to get his last name right, because he's a fucking mama loop. But on podcasts, he's fucking funny. Yeah. I hate his stand-up. The yeah, machine. Is. Stupid. Tom Shagura. That's the one he's funny. that translates to stand-up. Yeah. Him I, and, I like Tom Shagura. The McDonald guy. I can't think of his first name. Young guy. Very awkward. Like Norm. And he's like, oh, hey. What's that guy that does all the crowd work? The younger guy? Andrew Schultz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's, see, I think he's funnier on stage than off stage. Yeah. Like podcast, he's funny, but it's not, he's not the funniest guy in the room. Where on like, every time he does crowd work, Andrew Schultz fucking kills. 
like I don't know like what you watch a lot of comedy podcasts or like I mean I see like clip the, I see the clips and shit like I see a ton of two bears stuff you still watch stand up every once in a while I know who I like I can watch a preview like the Netflix pre like just the trailer for a comedy thing and tell if I'm gonna like this person or not and uh, nine times out of ten the answer is like I will probably laugh at a couple things you say. And then everything in between, I'm going to be like, oh my God. And well, and to your point about like stand up not being being that that, like as funny as they are on podcast or as funny as stand up used to be me, I guess I can't speak for everyone. Me personally, like just as I have changed like through the years, stuff that is like more natural is always going to be more funny to me. So like when I watch someone do stand up, I know you have planned this, you have rehearsed this. Everything, even if you are really good at making it seem like something is just off the top of your head, the odds are it's not. It's probably just a part of everything that you had scripted and you understand that natural is more funny. Not to say that, you know, nothing ever happens and a comedian just rips something off their dome on a... But when you're doing a special, when you're making like a Netflix special or whatever, you are probably not riffing, you know, because you have time constraints, like... You have, you're on a tour, so you have like a consistent show that you're doing every night. You have planned material. And that just kind of like, I guess since I know that, it just never seems as funny to me. But I agree with you. When they are just like on a podcast or something like that, and they're just like riffing off each other, telling just stupid stories or, you know, busting each other's balls and things like that, that shit's really funny and actually makes me laugh out loud. Bro, like... It's so weird because it's like the art of it is like changed. I can't find that fucking guy that's going to annoy the shit out of me. But the art of conveying that and like obviously you have an audience but like the scale of the audience is like much different. And like when I if I saw let's say Tim Dillon I don't like Tim Dillon but he was on one of the videos I saw. If I go to a Tim Dillon podcast and I watch it and I, I laugh, and I go to a Tim Dillon show, I don't get the same result. I think that's also very interesting because, like, you got to be, like, top-level shit to have, like, you have to be a good comedian. You can be a funny guy who, like, is a comedian, but, like, you're not getting a stand-up special. Sure, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think it's interesting, but it opens the door up to a different style of comedy which I appreciate because I think my biggest thing about stand up versus stories is motherfuckers will tell stories with their friend that they won't say on stage because she might yell at me in the crowd because she's offended by this joke sure but I also think that like when they tell so I was also thinking about this. Stand-up specials nowadays, I feel like 90% of people's content is either it's either about sex or it is about how they don't I don't think you should be offended by this, so here's a joke about it. Like when I watch a stand-up special, that is like 90% of what people talk about. Yeah. Whereas when they're on a podcast and they're just telling each other a story, they're more, like, human about it. And so, like, I think that plays into your point. But they're also not as aggressive. Like, they're not on. Yeah. So it's like, when they tell the story, it doesn't seem like you're being a dick. Because you might be telling a story about a time that you hooked up with someone. But, like, you could see that just hanging out with their buds telling the story, they're, like... I don't want to say embarrassed about telling the story, but it is a little more sheepish and a little more reserved versus a stand-up where you're trying to get the shock value from the audience. Well, they're vulnerable. Exactly. And so I think that's what makes it way better. Yeah. And I also think that's what's hurting stand-up is comedians are so upset about people getting their feelings hurt. That they're either that, too that, toned up or too that, toned back. That they're either too toned up or too toned back. And it's just like, if y'all, yeah, just go be you. Yeah. And don't even, if you're going to tell a joke that you think might offend someone, you don't need to give your whole spiel about, oh, yeah, I knew that one would get somebody, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's like, yeah, well, when you say that you knew it was going to get someone, 
even if I agree with you that it shouldn't be offensive, you still just look like an asshole. Because you're, like, well, proud of the fact that you offended someone. I wasn't really going with that. I was thinking more like Dave Chappelle said in his special. Like, he was doing stand-up, and someone came to a show and sat up close, and he was like, I know she's going to be pissed off. Yeah. He tried to break the tension and was like, hey, where are you guys from? Uh, I'm from California, but if you're asking about my ethnicity, I'm Chinese. And the boyfriend from school was like, yeah, I'm Mexican. And he and Dave Chappelle was like trying to bait the tension. And he was like, well, ma'am, she was pregnant. That's going to be the hardest working child ever <laughs> be born. And she got offended and left. Which I don't know if he was trying to do that. Or he was like, you're at a Dave Chappelle show. Let me just get her out of here. Yeah, or like one or the <laughs> other. But like, I can see that. Like, we we both worked in like customer service. So like when someone comes in, you're like, I'm going to take this person's order. And something's going to be wrong, and they go on to talk to a manager, or there's just going to be a dick. Yeah, you can you can read people. No, you can. You learn. So that. like, yeah, I was going from a reading people standpoint. I don't think I was going for a straight. Oh, I'm trying to piss this person off standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't know. I love stand up, and I I think it's very interesting how like it's separating the two art forms. When personally, I think it should be more of a categorize like everything has genres comedy doesn't have genre it used to you was a black comedian or a dirty comedian and that was kind of it or the clean comedian i mean yeah fuck bill cosby and then they were, well he wasn't the only <laughs> one but sure but yeah it was like three categories right but now it's like you should have like a genre title on it and i think that would also help because it would ease the comedian knowing he knows the audience a little bit better. And people going to a show like, oh, comedy show tonight, let's go. You know what you're getting into a little bit more. Because mm-hmm. Joey Diaz, he don't give a fuck. He's a fucking 70s comedian. He says the, the three-letter F word in jokes. Like, he doesn't care. Oh. The way he <laughs> talked. know what they're talking The about. way he talked in the 80s is how he talks now. He, he's, he's stuck in his ways. He's not changed. That's who he is. Hilarious guy. But I could see a lot of people going to that show and be like, fuck this guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think genres would help comedians. I think podcasts helps that kind of genreize in his head. Obviously, not everyone watches podcasts and then goes to. Yeah. But you know who else was offended? Rightfully so. The Jews? Yes. So, I did a little research on this Kanye West thing. Wow, you did research on something. I watched a video about someone talking about it. Well, I I haven't. I don't even know what he said, so you can tell me. So, he said, in layman's terms, he wanted to kill all the Jews. But he didn't mean it like that. He said he what he meant when he went back. He was on a Jewish guy's podcast. So, like, he's been a very hot topic. He's been on a couple podcasts. What he meant was he wanted black people to take the place of the Jews because stereotype, they own all the banks and the businesses and whatnot. Okay. So that's what he meant. So he wanted black people to take the Jewish people's place as financially successful? Yes. Which, like, it isn't the worst thing you can say. I understand what he's trying to say. I'm not trying to defend him. Well, it sounds like he said it in a really bad way. Yeah. He says things the worst way you possibly can. Mm-hmm. But the thing that I'm thinking about and what I would want to talk about was you think Adidas, since they do own the shoe models, you think they're coming out with Yeezy shoes in the future? They're not going to be called Yeezys. Again, I wouldn't be surprised. You can't call them Yeezys. I wouldn't be surprised if they took like a year break and then just kind of like... They're probably going to tweak the design some so they don't look quite the same. Well, the good thing about it is they don't have... The only thing that says Yeezy is the insole. Yeah. But, yeah, I I have no doubt. They will... I mean, it's tough because everybody who sees a shoe that even looks remotely like a Yeezy is going to be like, I don't care if it doesn't say Yeezy, that's a Yeezy. Yes. You know? I would not be surprised if they try to tweak the look a little bit. Attach another famous name to it. 
and then like try to roll with that. But I wonder if they'll like if they'll go too far the opposite direction. We like we got to get someone that's like the opposite of him. So like next thing you know, you have the logics or something stupid like that. You know. Let me get the but, Pete Davisons. Just put his it, name on it. That, like, piss off Kanye. You but know if they saying? did that though, like the amount of buzz yeah. that would be created around that shoe would be insane. But then they would also get accused of like taking advantage of the situation that Kanye created by being incredibly anti-Semitic, whether he intended yeah. to or not. I mean, that would be funny. Or get, like a lot of people, but like one thing is you got to think about he's not slowing down. Like he's talking, he's always talking about something. Right. And with Elon Musk on Twitter, like, well, he does now. He does for real. That's the thing. Now? Yeah. That's the thing now. Okay. Well, he ain't getting kicked off Twitter anytime soon. I think Instagram <laughs> kicked him. So like when will Adidas bring back the shoes without like, all right, he hasn't said anything in a week. Let's drop a shoe. Yeah. And and honestly, it might just be better for them to just scrap it, you know? I, I mean, hate that. Why? I like his shoes. Well, they're not his shoes anymore, so... They're actually selling out on StockX. I'm sure, because everyone thinks they're going to be worth, like, a ton of money down the road, but... Well, I bought a pair because I didn't want to, like, not have them. Like, I'm not... I, I did not buy them to, like, hold on to. Yeah. I'm going to buy them all fucking wear them. Yeah. But I bought another pair of foam runners. So you hate black. juice? I don't hate juice. But I like comf- I like my feet being nice and comfy. And also, every income tax, I get myself a few pair of shoes, depending on my financial situation. That was a shoe on the list. I was close to the end of the year. I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, which shoes am I going to get with my income tax money? I'm only getting one this year. I said, you know what, fuck it. I gotta get it now. Or I think it's gonna be dummy in price. The shoes like the stock market. Mm-hmm. Shoe prices went down. Oh, really? Tremendously, yes. Mm. So well, I need to go look at that because there's something I want. But not Yeezys, but You you said you wanted a pair of three fifties before. Yeah, but like be the time to do there it. have been multiple times where I could have gotten them and just didn't, so then I'm like, maybe I don't want them that much. Honestly, I like my NMDs so much. And they're, like, not dissimilar to Yeezys in terms of comfort and everything like that. So, I will probably just buy more NMDs. What I... The only thing from the situation that bothered me was, like, there were people who got upset that Adidas took as long as they did to drop Kanye. And it's just like, dude, this is... This is a multi-billion dollar corporation that has stockholders, boards of directors, CEOs, CFOs. They're, like... There's so, like, I understand that in an ideal world, someone does something shitty and then, like, we're just immediately, like, no, done. But, like, they have to have lawyers go look through all their contracts to see how much money they're going to owe someone before. Like, they have to plan for that. And so that doesn't mean that the day that Kanye said this shit, they weren't all immediately like, okay, we got to drop him. But even if they made that decision then, that doesn't mean that they can just immediately put it on paper. They have things they have to look through and figure it out. And I 100% do not believe that the reason it took them like a week to do it was because they were going to try not to do it. And then they saw how upset the public was about it. So then they were like, oh, we got to do it. That shit just takes time. And like I've seen people on Twitter who were like, oh, me and my family are never wearing Adidas again. It's like... Have some freaking patience. Like, that shit takes a minute, you know? You're something crazy, though. What? So, the video I watched of the guy, like, explaining the whole thing. And, like, I'm not going into, like, detail about that because, like, I didn't hear what he said or watch or anything like that. I'm just going off of what that guy said. But Adidas and Puma, there's two brothers. They found out Adidas. Oh, yeah, you didn't One know One brother this? split off and he did a... Uh, Puma. Yeah. There was both Nazis. Right. That shit's crazy. Yeah. You didn't know that? Like, there's a little bit of irony in that. Yeah. There is absolutely irony in that. <laughs> but, yeah. And another thing that's been brought up about this is Kanye says shit about everyone. 
Well, that's another point. Well, so to piggyback off that real quick, just the whole the thing that's stupid to me about the the companies were Nazis. You know what other company? There were a bunch of companies that were Nazis. Hitler literally commissioned the creation of Volkswagen himself. He literally was like, "I want a car that the people can afford. Make me a cheap, good, reliable car." Where did it, what happened? Volkswagen. Nobody's canceling Volkswagen. Mm-hmm. Like so. Anyways, but. Yeah, I've seen those points too. Like, where are we all when, you know, Kanye said uh, slavery was a choice or like some of the other wild shit that he, that he said, people. you know? Like, it was, yeah, it was a good point. Do you think... Cause it, I, I think we're just really protective of the Jews. They've been through a lot, but America isn't the ones that did it to them. And like, America as a whole still isn't ready to admit how much it fucked up with slavery. So, it's more protective of Jewish people than it is black people, which is very wrong. But, I think that's a part of it. One thing that I'm, like, curious about, because I hate the internet, but I want to be a famous YouTuber, is Elon Musk on Twitter. I don't care. I don't have... I don't do politics. I don't know anything about politics. There's an elephant and a donkey. I don't know which one's a Republican and which one's a... uh, Republicans. Democrat. I don't know... Point proven. I don't think about politics, nor do I want to know anything about politics. I got first world problems. I got honey dips. I'm trying to worry about shorties. I'm trying to buy a house, get my car paid off. I got four jobs. I got shit I gotta worry about. I got friendships like this cocksucker right here that I have to put time in and nourish and care about a friendship if you want to work. Other friends like that. I have to remember things about his day that impact him, how he feels, so I can follow up on that and be a good friend. There's shit that I have in my life that I put over politics all day, every day. Like making sure those Yeezys are low priced when I bought them. Got I'm on two hundred dollars. I was very happy with myself. Put in a bid, and I and I won. Anyways, I don't give a fuck about politics. There's some things that some people say that I'm cool with on both sides, right? I think Elon Musk opening the floodgates on Twitter and saying, "Hey, your opinions, free speech, go for it." I think Twitter's gonna be way more toxic, huh? And cause way yeah, more. Yeah, it is. Well, a lot of people are talking about leaving it. Like, public. But people with check marks by their names. So, Twitter's just going to be Trump people, I guess. Is that the right term to say it? I don't... I mean, I don't think it'll just be that. I mean, it'll be people who think that they should be able to just say whatever they want. And then people who don't give a shit and don't care enough to delete their account, like me. But, um... People are going there, like... Just go on there and troll people for fun, basically. Sure, yeah, I guess. But... Because, like, I guess the people... Trump, so, like, I don't know fucking... I'm talking out my ass right now. I don't know what fuck I'm talking about. Trump people, they probably don't use Twitter like that. Oh, everyone uses Twitter like that. Dude, if you get on politics Twitter, it's fucking... So you got them fucking... Grab some popcorn. You got like the, the fucking construction workers... Who think Mexicans took all the jobs on Twitter talking about shit? You have like the, you have, you have the people who own those businesses on Twitter talking about stuff like that, and there, I mean, there are some. So you know how like you'll get on. Everybody has a Facebook, right? Yeah. Like the the impoverished people who live in like those people have Facebook, right? They're on there. They're making their post, run on sentences, misspelling everything. Talking about how if you don't like that I'm going to block you on Facebook, you can say it to my face, blah, blah, blah. Don't mess with my daughter. I had a bad day. I've been crying for three hours cooking collards and liver for dinner or whatever, you know? Like, just, you're not, like, not very well educated, very low income people. Those people are on Twitter, too. There's not as many of them, but they're on there. Uh huh. Interesting. I was just like, I don't know. Like, every time someone asks me as a friend on Facebook, I, like, go and I, I unfollow them. Because it's like, I'll be your friend, but I don't, I don't want to see any of it. I don't want to see. It's like, literally, 
I don't have anything on Facebook. Yeah, I've done that to a couple people. Um, Instagram, I post stupid ass pictures. I don't go on there and do stuff for it. I do for my job. I have to go on there and uh, I look and you know, like stuff for that. But and I like post stuff on the same topical account. Yeah. Twitter, I just repost videos and don't tweet. I don't like the internet. <laughs> yeah. Which is like weird because we do YouTube and we'd probably be a lot better at YouTube if we did do social media more. Yeah, probably. Hire, hire someone, but that shit pisses me the fuck off. I hate YouTube. Why? Because I can't get the motherfucker right. We've been doing the shit for four years now. Mm-hmm. I'm so angry because, like, you know, say you, you gotta worry about yourself and your lane. You can't compare yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, when you edit YouTube content for other people who's been doing it less than you and they get way more views than you, it's like, what the fuck are we doing wrong? I'm gonna upload at the same time as they do. And it's like, we don't get dick on views. I can't find a fucking time that works. And then I was like, maybe we do too much content. We do Indian videos. Well, they get a lot of views. So we can't really cut that. The audience is coming to see that. Mm-hmm. Still with videos. Well, maybe we can cut that. Get a lot of views. Shouldn't cut that either. Podcast, top five. Things that we love doing. Playing games. Don't get views. What the fuck? Like, honestly, what the fuck? Like, we've been doing this shit long enough. And I've been going out of my way to do trailer reactions. And I hate doing trailer reactions. I just want to go in. I want to watch the movie and fucking be done, right? Yeah. I don't want to watch the trailer, edit a video, watch the trailer again, upload a video, make sure everything's right while I watch it. And then go to a movie theater and watch it again. I don't want to fucking do that. I hate doing trailer reactions. But guess what? The Creed one I was cool with because it's Rocky and I was watching that one anyways. I woke up early, did that one. Woke up early, did the fucking Ant-Man, Quantumania one, right? Mm-hmm. Same day. Same fucking day. No fucking views. Well, the Creed one did okay for us. But yeah. But still. Same day, that shit should have been at least four or 500, I think. Like, we, when we... I don't, we used to do them a week behind, and they used to always do better. I don't fucking get this time with YouTube. I don't get it. I don't fucking like it. No. Yeah. Maybe just nobody likes us. M- maybe that's it. And like, as much as I love YouTube, and want this shit to be like my permanent job, and dreams, like, I gave it up on that, unfortunately. It was the hardest, bitterest pill to swallow. Thank God. <laughs> I don't need a lot of money. I know. It's really hard to be someone's friend and like, like, I can't, like, I can't look at you and be like, that's just not going to happen. I mean, it could happen. People do it. It takes longer for movie people, but it could happen. But I mean, I don't know, shit. I don't, again, I don't need a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I got a decent enough job. Where I could like cut days and still be okay if I, we were getting paid regularly. We paid every two months. Yeah. Like, fucking fuck. Like, if we get the fucking time to upload videos mm-hmm. or the content people want to watch, I don't fucking get it. Yeah. We were doing so good and then now we're at 45 and then 30. Goes down to 20. We made a, I guess a, I don't know why people unsubscribe. They don't subscribe. I guess they don't like what we have to say. Well, I think there's some bots out there, too. And then we go back up to 30. Go down. My goal was to get three years. We hit 1,000. So I was like, no, two years and we hit 1,000. Three Mm -hmm. years, I was like, I want to get to five. It was was already at 2,000. So I was like, let's get to five. Two years later, we're still not at fucking 5,000 subscribers. Like, again, my, like, life goal a year ago was... I'm going to work so many days here. I do this. I do this for extra income. I'm going to live out in the middle of nowhere where I can have a big, nice house. Big for me. I don't need that much room. So it's four bedrooms. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. Just be conscious of how long it's going to take you to get to everyone else that you do spend time with. I just want to be alone. Yeah, I get that. 
Or to get to a movie theater. I also get that. But with streaming and everything, it's just like, sometimes it's, you know, that's what I want. I want an in-ground pool, four bedrooms, and a fucking fireplace, and a fucking YouTube account that gets me a check <laughs> once a month that I could sustainably live off of for the most part. Well, that last one is... Yeah, and it, bro, <laughs> it's probably not yeah, happening. Bro, that shit pisses me off so fucking much, because it's like, not to hate on the channel I work for, but dog really like you talking about the other channel you they work just for? got their shit together they, i got them looking nice they look they looking swaggy maybe because like they have a head start they don't have any subscribers they're not monetized but they get views well also they do sports shit and beer shit which are both the beers don't get any views more popular well okay fine the, the beer the beer is like us the sports shit they alone don't get anything. that's just like that has just a much more wider audience than movie stuff does now yeah. Mo movies if we had started cinematopical in 2000 i'm trying to think of how much younger you are than me if we started cinematopical in 2010 we would be popping because i was in an eighth grade well 2012 we met whatever if we had started in 2012 when we met cinematopical would be popping because movies were a, were a thing then and then, yeah. honestly, and then in, we would have been so established by then, 17, 18, 19, when, like, the last, like, three great years of movies, we probably would have, like, had a big pop. And then, even now, we'd probably still be, like, mellowing out again, because COVID killed movies. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just pissed off because I love it so much, and, like, my dreams are dying in front of me on that fucking computer screen when I go look at the fucking analytics and it's just i don't know it pisses me off yeah i realized it wasn't gonna happen a very long time ago yeah but you're a realist no your priorities changed since then since we started this how so you got a different job yeah but i never did this thinking that it was gonna be but the time allotted, allotted. How you say it? allotted? Yeah, but that burnt me out quick as fuck. I hated the time that I was putting into it. You love doing this. At first, it was the opposite. Yeah, you but that's the one driven. Look, but that's how what? that's how I am. Like I, I am good at everything, great at nothing. Like I love picking something up. Doing it for like a year or two, and then being like, I don't want to do this anymore. I wanted, I want something new. Like I need that. I need to do something different constantly, or I am not entertained. Yeah. I also have diagnosed ADHD, and it's really bad. So it's like, yeah. When we first started this stuff, I was all about it. Well, and now then, you're married. Like we also had time to do other shit. Like we would hang out, do two or three videos, and do something else. Yeah. Movie related or not movie related or fucking. Go to Manifest and buy movies or whatever the fuck we did that day. Talk about golf. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. So. Little dual monsters. Yeah, that kind of changed. You're married now, obviously, between the job that you have more on your plate. Yeah. I would still do all of that stuff with you, but you're always working. Exactly. Like, I'm up all night, dog. And sometimes you are, so I guess we just need to find a golf club, golf course with some fucking... <laughs> a night golf? <laughs> yeah, maybe you do need to do that. But, I don't know, dude, I had, like, bro, you can ask him, I had this shit fucking mapped out what I want to do. I want to get three or four extra people coming on, helping out, like, doing videos for, like, superhero shit. And I, you just can't find anyone where we're at. And that would hurt, because then it was like, alright, well, shit. Because the stuff we don't want to talk about, we have to talk about. And then I got podcasts lined up. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to do a podcast about this, about this. And I think it's good material. Yeah. But. We're just really late to the game. Maybe we need to try that. The one podcast I had, like, not about movies, but could be about movies, about everything. The Watch Mojo is Wrong, where you take their list hmm. and redo it and combine both lists together show with someone else like i had a whole podcast network set up dog like this shit was real to me for real for real but i don't know it's just 
I'm frustrated. I'm angry. And the future is scary because now it's like, well, fuck, what am I going to do now? That shit sucks. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, but at the hours I put in this thing, I was like, this shit going to pop sooner or later. Like, a lot of money to you and a lot of money to me is two different things. True, but the amount of money that we make from this is still incredibly far off from being sustainable for anyone. Yes. By a lot. Yes. But... Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what I could cut. Because the movie reviews, they do decent. I don't want to stop doing shit I like. Mm -hmm. Just because it doesn't get views. But, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I don't got the answer, Sway. I don't got the answer, Sway. I don't have it for you either. Yeah. I'm I'm here because I like you. I appreciate the support. (laughs) But, yeah. Those are my frustrations about YouTube. No, they're fair. How have you, how have, how have you been feeling? About YouTube? About life. I feel good about life. Uh, I love my wife. Uh, living together has been ten times more easy than a lot of married people who I have known have said it was going to be. And now I'm just kind of starting to wonder if those people are just selfish people. Uh, well, divorce is a thing for a reason. Yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah. My job has been a little overwhelming lately. My day job and night job, my regular job, a little overwhelming lately, really busy, really short-staffed, doing the work for a lot of different people, a lot of pressure right now, but not, like, crushing. It's fine. Uh, Been watching a fair amount of movies lately. I... So, Cinetopical... For a while, almost just completely crushed my desire to watch movies because it felt like a job and it felt like I had to do it. And then I stopped caring and pulled back and you started pretty much just doing everything. And then it still took like a year. But after like a year, then I was finally like, shit, I I could, I watch movies just because I fucking want to now again. Yeah. And that's what made me love them in the first place. Uh, so me and movies... We're in a really good spot. That's good. Um, but yeah. I was like, that's what this was supposed to be. It was supposed to be like, I was talking about shit we loved. But like the shit we like truly, if we did a channel just about like shit we wanted to talk about, we will get no views. That's true. Anybody trying to sit here and watch top five James Stewart? <laughs> 12 people would. Yeah, that's true. I mean, even the H24 stuff that we do doesn't get. It kind of does. Depending on the thing, it pops. The Halloween game did not pop like I wanted it to, but top five, over and under, the simplistic ideas. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just too complex for motherfuckers for our title and marketing. Maybe that's it. Maybe. Or maybe just, because like. Just title everything movie game. See what happens. That doesn't work. Like, even, like, Framed, I think that was the only one, because we put Framed in the title, that it worked. Move Viddle, Post Viddle, whatever, fuck those things. Move Viddle, Post Viddle. Whatever those things are called. They didn't really pop like that. But, like, shit, if we got, like, 80 to 100 views a video, our shit would pop, probably. Like, money-wise, we would get a check once a month, instead of every two months, I think. Yeah. But to be fair, the money has grown. Yeah. Like, we used to get paid, like, once every four months. Yeah, six months. Four yeah. months, yeah. Speaking of, that thing hit the bank account, I think. It did. All right. And you still owe me for the tux and for my bachelor. I paid the tux off, I thought. You paid one of them off. You still owe me for one of them. We'll talk about that after the video. Yeah. Get this straightened out. But it is a podcast mostly about movies, so we're ending off with a top five as usual. It's topical because... The Policeman is coming out on Amazon Prime, starring the uh, one Harry Styles. So we're doing top five cop movies in honor of The Policeman. Did you have any rules? No. We gotta be a cop. I don't want no federal agents in this shit. Yeah, well that was my thing. Is like, some people are investigators. Like, 
Or they work in a police department. Or they're doing cop things. Like detectives, they count. Like, Rush Hour, technically a cop movie. Yeah. But, like, they're not cops. The only time that one is ever a cop is when, uh... Dang, I'm blanking on his name. Chris Tucker. Thank you. I couldn't remember Gone with the Wind earlier. Yeah, the only time they're ever doing regular cop shit is when, like, Chris Tucker gets in trouble in the beginning of three? Two or three, and he's, like, directing traffic for a little bit. Oh, that's three. Yeah. But they're not cops. They're just out doing shit. He worked for the drug and team in, in the, the beginning. Game. Not the DEA. He worked for the narcotics division of LAPD. Nah, he was looking at bombs. No. Chris Penn. No, no, because remember, he's like trying to set up the deal in the beginning of the parking lot. He's yeah. friends with the girl who but that, works bombs. That wasn't about... I don't think that was about fucking drugs. It was about the C4 in the trunk. He was trying to sell the C4. And then the two cops pulled up. What? He's on some special fucking division. He's not doing normal cop shit. If it happens, if it goes out in a police department, I think it's okay. Okay, well... Like, we, FBI. I didn't put any FBI on my list. My rules it, were... It, no... Let me make sure that this... I stay true to this. I didn't say no detectives. But I just said no... No, like, federal shit. Which, you know, you kind of did too. But the bad guy can't be, like, a terrorist. Like, you have to be handling some sort of, like, street-level something. And I did make one exception, but I'll explain it when I get there. Okay. I think I think we're on the same page on that. Yeah. All right, I'll start off. My number five, I'm pretentious, so I put a little pretentious action movie on my list. Hard-boiled, John Woo, fucking everything great about cinema, action cinema at that time is in this movie. Guns, it don't fucking matter how many bullets is in a clip. We fucking shooting until there's a moment of tension and it's convenient for both of us to run out of bullets. Very cliched, but because I love the genre, I adore the cliches. A part of me is like, ugh. But later on after rewatches, it's fun. It adds to everything and I really enjoy it. And John Woo perfect job of encapsulating everything I love about action movies at this time into this film. <coughs> Goodness. The only problem I have with this movie is I hate fucking reading. Oh. Reading is for prisoners. I don't like doing it, but it's fairly simple enough. Undercover cop. Best friend dies, who's also a cop. He's got a retribution. He goes after the street gangs who's selling guns. The undercover, the other undercover cop, the true undercover cop, he finds out who it is. They become friends and they take down this thing in one of the greatest third acts of all time, a shootout in a fucking hospital. It's fucking incredible. Cinematography, I mean chore choreography. Cinematography is good. Choreography, like dog, fucking fantastic. Nice. Never seen it. Should watch it. Uh, four. Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know why I didn't even think about that. It's that cop on the title. Yeah, it does. Play the music, Con. Bev, Bev, Beverly Hills Cop, Bev. Bev, Beverly Hills Cop. Actual phony gonna find those drugs. He's a cop that goes to Beverly Hills and does cop shit. Again, best friend dies. So, cliches with the five and four already. Just Eddie Murphy's at his prime and he's one of the funniest motherfuckers alive at that time. And you're letting Eddie Murphy do Eddie Murphy things. He's putting bananas in tailpipes. He's jerking around cops, which is funny because he's a cop. So you get that rebelliousness in there and the performance in the character. And he does what he needs to do to get to feel even, to feel like he did his friend justice. And you get decent action, but you get 10 out of 10 comedy. Yeah. So that's why it's my number four. Nice. Uh, my number five, Hot Fuzz. Also technically has cop in the title because fuzz is British slang. Easily easily could have been top ten. It was one that I was like, I don't want to leave this off. Yeah. But <sighs> very hard for me. Yeah. Also interesting because like he is quite literally just a regular cop. 
uh, in a very small town. But like the problem that he's dealing with is not your typical cop problem. It's a fucking cult, although he doesn't know that at the time. But yeah, I mean, part of you know that Coronetto trilogy, it's funny, great humor. Him and uh, uh, Nick Frost, they're just a great combo. Like the the running uh, Point Break thing is great it's very funny and uh that movie's just really really enjoyable to me all around and the bad boys references and like the bad, bad boys. boys yeah all of the like all yeah the throw the throws to like the cliche cop movies 10 out of 10 uh number four for me uh my bottom three are actually all comedies which i don't care because sometimes those make the best cop movies uh number four for me again because it's kind of like street levelish stuff I went with 21 and 22 Jump Street. Uh, I did not think that I was going to find those movies as funny as I did. Like, uh, Channing Tatum, he dabbled in comedy up till that point, but it wasn't really what he was known for. Like, he was just kind of like the muscly hunk dude, right? And then Jonah Hill, everybody knew him from Superbad and like the Apatow or Apatow-esque things that he had done. So I was just kind of expecting more just like complete raunchiness, which it's not like these movies are devoid of that, but they're more just like irreverently funny instead of just like overtly sexual. Um, and it also like flips the whole high school thing on its script because like it's cool to be smart and all that stuff. These movies are just really funny and like the cop parts of it are just really good and interesting to me. That was your... Oh, that was, was your four. four. Yeah. Number three for me is Rush Hour. I didn't give a fuck. They cops. I don't want a Rush Hour. I don't even think Jackie Chan is a cop. He's like... When they go to... He's like head of security or some two, shit for this. And two, he works at the department. But that's like... Not what he was doing in one. Like, it doesn't even... I don't give a fuck. It's your list. You do what I you love want. Rush Hour. This shit... Is funny as fuck. It has the like nineties black comedy, easy the best comedy comedians shows, whatever the fuck you want to call it, the best. And Chris Tucker, one of the best at it, especially at that time, coming off Friday movies like that. Ten out of ten on the comedy because of Chris Tucker, and then you add in a different type of comedy with Jackie Chan's fighting style of comedy, also. Good, but the action, it makes the action. It puts it on 10 as well because the choreography is fucking fantastic. And the editing is nice because Jackie Chan is doing the shit himself. So you don't want to have mad cuts and have wide open fight scenes. And it looks even more impressive when he's doing all this crazy shit. And then you got the obviously buddy cop dimension in that as well to add more comedy to it. And then you add more comedy into it because... He's from China, and he is from... The whole different worlds thing. Yeah. Yeah. California? Yeah, LAPD. Yeah, LA. So, 10 out of 10 on the comedy. 10 out of 10 on the action. The story is whatever. It's a basic story, and it's exactly what it needs to be. So, for that, I absolutely love it. A little better than Rush Hour 2, just because... Oh, shit's funnier. The stakes feel more higher in the first one. And you get all the jokes repeated, kind of, too. So, Rush Hour 1, superior of the Rush Hours. Yeah. I guess I'm not arguing that they're not technically cop movies, but they just broke my, like, terrorist rule. Oh, they went big. Yeah. They went big for sure. Yeah. Uh, Number two for me, Heat of the Night. And I ain't talking about the goddamn TV show. <laughs> you got Virgil Tibbs. They call him Mr. Tibbs. Classic movie. Again, different worlds. And this... Oh, I guess you... Technically, it's a buddy cop movie. I guess, yeah. That's a reach. I've, I haven't seen it. I've seen like pieces of it. Because they're working together on a case. They're forced to be working together on a case. Obviously, Athens, Georgia is very racist in the 1970s or 60s when this film takes place. And having a black forensics expert and detective helping you, being forced to help you, doesn't make the best. And obviously, who did it? Well, let's blame the black guy. 
So you got tension from the start of the film. And then just like if he accuses any white person, they're getting mad. So you got people trying to kill Virgin Tips throughout this film. You got this conflict in the sheriff. And the back and forth dialogue is amazing. But the case itself is interesting enough to be its own film without the race dynamic in there. But this film, so fucking good. 9.8 out of 10 wings. Like, top tier filmmaking. It doesn't say too much. It lets shot speak. The filmmaking in it is excellent because of that. Like, dialogue. It knows when to shut up and let these actors fucking act because they're good at what they do. Authentic, I assume. Because I, I was watching people like, damn, that's motherfucking so-and-so's dad. Like, that's how that motherfucker acts. Like, so I almost say it's authentic to a point as well. Just a good fucking movie. Easy investment. Great tension. And that's what you want in a cop movie. Because it's funny. Because I can make a list of top 10 cop movies easy. Cop movies are very good. We left a ton of them off in a watch for me. Colors. Hot Fuzz. A lot of good cop movies were left off this list. But they all have great investment. But it's funny, everyone hates, hates the police. Fuck the police. But we love cop movies. Very weird. That's nope. my number two. That was number two. Alright, uh, my number three is The Other Guys. Uh, Very funny. It's so funny. And, again, I have three comedies as the bottom three on my list. I generally don't like modern comedies. Like... 2010 till now, there are very few comedies that have actually made me like laugh out loud. Uh, the other guys does. I love that movie. It cracks me up. Um, uh, like the whole Will Ferrell playing the straight man, but he wasn't always a straight man. He used to be a freaking pimp and like is in denial about the fact that he was a pimp. His whole, my wife's not hot thing, but she clearly is like, it's good shit. I love that. And then Mark Wahlberg, like this is maybe this is one of my favorite Wahlberg performances. I don't know why. Like, Walmart, Wahlberg needs to do more comedy. I love him in a comedy. I know that movie with him and Kevin Hart just came out, but Kevin Hart gets under my skin, so I haven't watched it. Um, but, yeah. And, the, like, the cop stuff in it itself is, like... Like, you have some non-realistic shit. Like, obviously, they're not going to be that dumb and still be detectives, right? No, no police department in the world has detectives so far outside of regular procedure and still keep their jobs. Um, but I do love the bit at the end where Michael Keaton is like, cause they're like talking about, I can't even remember their names, but Dwayne Johnson and uh, Sam, Jackson. Sam Jackson's characters. I love the part of the end where Michael Keaton's like, you guys know they weren't good cops. Right. And it's just like, Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> and like the, the fact that it all actually all of it ties back into the police department, like the big conspiracy, like financial plot, like the target is the police pension fund, and so that kind of keeps it all like in the circle. And I think that's actually just good storytelling. I thought you hated that movie. The other guys, yeah, I love the other guys. Like, all those homeless people probably got that idea of fucking in your car from that movie. Dirty Mike and the Boys. Yeah. So yeah, I. We, me and the people I work with actually like make jokes about Dirty Mike and the Boys pretty frequently. Um, but yeah, I love that movie. Number two for me is the one that kind of breaks my terrorist rule, but I kept it anyway. Is Die Hard. What? Go ahead. Well, the reason it breaks my terrorist rule is because John McClane is still very much just a regular ass cop. Like, he's not some high intelligence detective who has been on this case or been assigned to it. He just stumbles upon this shit because he went to go get his wife and now he has to deal with it. So the fact that he, and I understand that like there is no shortage of diehard commentary that talks about how John McClane is like the every man's action hero or Bruce Willis in general. He's not super buff like Schwarzenegger or Stallone and he did all this stuff for, you know, uh, being an audience surrogate in action movies. But even just specifically talking about, like, the role of the cop in the movie. He's just a regular cop. 
and he just happens to have to handle terrorists because of how things ended up. And he does it. What? Did, what? The greatest cop movie of all time. It's my number one. Is it Die Hard? Lethal Weapon. I'm not done. That was my... Oh, wait. That's oh, your I'm two. just kidding. That was my two. Yeah. yeah. Number one, Lethal Weapon. For some reason, I thought that was your number one. What? Die Hard? Yeah. Oh. And that's why I got mad. But Die Hard would have been my number six. That was the one that's like, do I leave a classic off? Or do I be pretentious and try to get the audience I want? I was like, don't be pretentious because I'm an asshole. But Die Hard is it's great. But Lethal Weapon. Chris, buddy cop movie of all time. So you got the dynamic never done better of, hey, you're this person, I'm this person. We don't like each other, but we learn to love each other because our job brings us together. Fantastic. Great storytelling. Great dialogue. Action. Fantastic. Are they terrorists? Are they not? Eh, who gives a fuck? They're bad guys. And Riggs and Murgatall, they go get down to the bottom of it and they go find these motherfuckers and arrest them or kill them, depending on who it is. But, 10 out of 10. One of the greatest movies of all time, I think. I absolutely love this movie. I think it's one of the most underrated movies of all time because Richard Donner is such a great director. Shane Black, the writing in it is superb as well, but like it's so underrated for the directing. Uh, Suicide turned into this great movie, and the investment and the following and how it develops uh, is very logical. Everything in this movie is logical. The franchise, each movie is less good. They literally have Bruh, him arrested. That ending fight is, and then they're like, their friendship. Hey, let's take him out of handcuffs. No. No. Now that we have this incredibly dangerous human being detained, bro, we gotta take him out of handcuffs so they can have their fist fight. It was I'm not about saying, trust and I'm love not and saying friendship. It wasn't good storytelling. It is not logical. Mr. Joshua got that ass cut by it, Mel Gibson. It's not logical. Another Jew hater. If you watch the podcast, we talked about Kanye's Jew hating ass about Yeezys a little while ago. But Mr. Joshua got an ass whooped by Mel Gibson. And then he took the cop's gun because it was re-arresting him. He went to shoot and raise the Murtaugh at the same time. Bah! Got his punk ass. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. I cried. It's amazing. And this film, later on, lets me get Leo Gitz from Joe Pesci. 10 out of 10. Greatest cop movie of all time. Uh, well, it's not because Heat exists, which is my number one. And there are lots of like really good crime drama movies that I like thought about when making this punk. list. But so many of them... He's just a regular cop. Yeah. Fuck! You forgot about Heat? I thought he was bigger. No, dude. I mean, he's like... I just assumed they robbed so many places that it went higher up. But yeah, he's a fucking regular cop. Right. Fuck! And they have to contend with federal agencies that are trying to come in. Yeah. And watch like, and take things from them. We did something and talked about heat like a month ago. And like... I talked about... It was on the podcast. I talk about heat every chance Since we've been doing the podcast... We talked about Heat in some movie. The De Niro. And I watched it right afterwards. Yeah. How did I forget about... Fuck. Yeah. Continue. Um, yeah. So, there's lots of crime dramas that I thought about when making the list. But so many of them just kind of focused more on the, the bad guys. But Heat, you get like a perfect split. Because you have Pacino and De Niro. And why would you not... Like, they have equal billing in this movie. Uh, so... It's just, it's literally cops and robbers. And it's like, it is a fleshed out, excellent crime cop movie based on, like, a, like essentially a game that we played as kids. The cops have to catch the robbers. And the robbers are hard to catch, but he's really good at his job. He's really good at his job. So it's really just like a big old chess match where they're each like the leader of their team and they're moving their pawns around. And trying to figure stuff out. And she's got a great ass. And like. I love that movie. It's. Uh, I think to me it is a near perfect movie. And easily my favorite cop movie. It would have been my number two. As much as you love Heat. Is Heat in your top ten? Movie, like favorite movies, favorite movies of, all, of time? all time? Probably. I haven't like really sat down and revisited like. That list in a while. We haven't done that list yeah. in a while. 
Uh, but it it's got a really good shot. Try to give it a breather, you know. Yeah. Wait a year or two. Yeah. Do it. Mm-hmm. But damn, that right, was a cop movie. Yeah. Forget to take you down. But that was the list. Tell us down below in the comment section your top five favorite cop movies are. But again, whole podcast, man. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. If you want to talk about something and want us to talk about something, put it in the comment section below. Scroll back up, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe. It's not a game, it's a